Hello and welcome to Shark Park where we have an absolute blockbuster on our hands to finish the round uh, with the Auckland Warriors here to take on the resident home side, the Cronulla Sharks. I am Snicko Bro. I'm joined in the box by Tyrone. Ty, what do you have to say to start this game off? Yeah, no, this should be a fascinating game. Warriors coming off that belting at the Roosters and Sharks only just losing to the, to the Bulldogs last week. At the shot at this ground, yeah, both teams come in with some good form, and um, I think if the Warriors didn't have that unfortunate minus four to start the season, they'd be up in the top eight with the Sharks. Um, so both teams coming in with a bit on. We see Rohan Kaval here, or Rahul Kaval, one of the Kavals, uh, <laughs> debuting for the Warriors after that shock mid-season trade where the Warriors shipped off Jaden White and Trunks Ixatoki, uh, and gained Kaval and Ginger Pom, who will be coming off the bench later. Uh, listeners are in for a treat tonight. We have AMAC on the sidelines. We see some drizzle coming down, AMAC. How is it down there? Uh, it's not too bad so far. I've got my umbrella here just in case, but the energy coming off the crowd here is almost enough to stop the rain coming down. Yeah, and the crowd will be up for this one because they know that it's just throughout the halfway point of the season. You want to sort of solidify yourself in this top eight uh, before things start getting real tight. We saw what happened last season when it was... The last two rounds are absolute madness. I think every single team was in con in contention to try and nab that eighth spot. So if you can just give yourself a little bit of a buffer uh, going into that, you'll be pretty comfortable. And that's what the Sharks have an opportunity to do here is Malquis is going to go for a 40-20 really early. Uh, not his best kick, and Saddlecart picks it up and he's driven back. Yeah, and Saddlecart moving out to the centres with this blockbuster trade. And it'll be interesting to see how he goes out there in the centres. Yeah, he made his name uh, with you guys at the Rabbitohs as coming back on in that prop role. Uh, he was really good at that while he was with you guys. But yeah, since he moved to the Warriors, a bit of halves, a little bit out the back. As that's a knock on off Tiara's shoulder. I thought that went backwards. Uh, but the Sharks have got away with one there. Yeah, been a bit lenient, the, the official, Will K. And it'll be very interesting to see how the Sharks go on here. Yeah, it's crimped straight through a hole off a little short ball from Delaney. I think it's worth mentioning Malchus in this game. Look, Malchus, he's leading the SMVP leaderboard. He's been absolutely dominant uh, so far this season. But he's coming up against Patrick Corcoran, who's uh, recently debuted for the Blues, I believe, for the first time. And he was instrumental in that game to win. And we'll see tomorrow uh, which of the two come out on top where we have our decider. But yeah, if the Warriors can stop Malchus today, that'll go a long way uh, towards winning this game. Whereas on the flip side, David Tiawa has been absolutely electric for the Warriors. Since he switched into that left-hand role, he's been on fire. And you know that the Sharks are going to have to watch him. As now Malchus puts up the big kick. Uh, tap back. And it's picked up by Lachlan Lockyer, uh, the bench rookie who's moved into that hooker role following Jaden White's departure. Yeah, and it'll be, he has some big shoes to fill. However, he, he probably will do it with the star players that he has around him, including this man, Chance Bunsen. Wow, oh, oh, almost. With me. Yeah, almost straight past MVT, who was a former wire himself, so he knows Chance Bunce very well. As McCartney ball plays out to Corcoran. And I think you're right. I think that Chance Bunce is going to do that all night. And McCartney straight through a hole, not something you see too often. Uh, but he slices through there. Yeah, Chance Bunce is going to do that all game. It's going to be up to the Sharks just to make sure they can limit the time he gets to the ball and good attacking opportunities. Because he's the kind of player that can make you pay. If they go the two pass out to Pat Walker and he puts up the bomb. Tiawa chases through. Uh, Usher comes down with it. Yeah, good there from Usher. Just gone underneath the high ball and he's just too big for the winger. Yeah, Tiara was coming through. He's not a small man. As Malchus gets his first line break of the game. Wasn't... Oh! Absolutely pumped there. I think it was Aaron White coming across in cover. AMAC, what do the fans say about that? Well, half the fan just jumped out and started calling for the blood just then. So, I'd be worried if I was some of those touchies because they're going to start throwing some things if things start don't start going the way of the home side. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was McCartney or Aaron White. It was one of them coming across in cover and... They're really good defensively down that edge, but they've just made a mistake there. As now Barisic pops up on the side, straight over Aaron White before he gets an offload away. Maybe that's a bit of a get square uh, after Malquis was hit high. As now Tyre takes it, goes to Kalsakai. Kalsakia, he's also been really good in that 11 jersey for a long time now. So just stars all over the pack in the four pack as Tyre takes it hit up. 
it's going to be up to the likes of Sunny to marshal his team around and make sure that they get into a right spot. As they go to Cascade again, is he going to be able to push over from there? No. John McCartney holds him up with the help of Aaron White. Fifth tackle, they go to Sunny Ty. He dribbles in the grubber and Drew Matthews is over. First try of the game goes to Drew Matthews. The home side's elated. That was almost too easy, Tyrone. Yeah, that was just way too easy. and Just had him on a string, knew what to, was going to happen, and Drew Matthews just wasn't, which just went in untouched, and a brilliant kick from Sunny Ty, just perfectly weighted, and seemed like Lockyer got his assignment wrong, just went to the wrong side of Matthews. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe the goalpost had a bit to do with it, or maybe, yeah, lock on lock. You're not used to being in that hooker role he's been coming on, on as a prop all season. Yeah, uh, that's the start the home side wants. And now Matthews has a chance to convert his own kick. Of course, he slots it over eight minutes in. Cronulla up 6-0 over the Waz, and... That was almost too easy. We saw it last week in Agram Tyre, and you give away a penalty on the fifth tackle, and it leads the points almost every single time. And Cronulla Sharks proved that there. The Warriors are going to need to be made of sterner stuff if they're going to hold out the Sharks for the rest of this game. They need to bring back some of that much vaunted, immense defensive pressure. Uh, they had it last week against the Roosters, and they need to bring it again tonight. Yeah, they do, and if they just they just have to, otherwise. We've seen what can happen to them. They can just crumble in a heap and find the find to be way behind. Yeah, it's now Lucky Tour straight through a hole. That's a bit too easy there for the Sharks. Lucky Tour, he's made his name in the second row, but recently transitioned to that prop role and done it with a plum. There's now Barrett just goes straight through. So back to back linebacks from the props. Looking ominous here for the Warriors. Just holes everywhere. As now Delaney gets it out to Malchus and Finally, they make a tackle on first contact. He's brought down by Tiara and someone else. A little bit of help there. Now, Ty touches it again. A lot of touches for him. Back to Jay Kitchens. I think this is the second game in the SRL. Uh, he'll be looking to make his mark on a game sometime sooner rather than later. Fifth tackle. They go to Tyra again. He just straight up drops it. David Barner picks it up. It's going to be up to the Warriors now to work it out of trouble. Yeah, and they have the ability to do so. But it's just can they do it? And... For the Warriors' sake, you hope they do before. They can the definitely do it. Yeah. They can definitely do it, the Warriors. They're a class side. And six, six, like six points in 11 minutes is not the be on the end all. We all know that in the SRL. Now, Engo takes a break. I guess his first touch of the game. So you can see just how starved the Warriors are of the ball when Engo hasn't got a touch in the first 10 minutes. Now, McCartney goes out to Aaron White, who uh, just quietly, I believe, is the best center in the SRL. He's brought down a good tackle there. Lockie in there goes to McCartney. Again, out to Caval. He's looking to get some early touches in, but he's going to be out of commission here for the fifth tackle kick. So it's going to come to Corcoran, I believe, although McCartney's getting into position. And that's where they go. He goes all the way down straight to Hone King. What can he do off the kick return? Aaron White, as he does, so often wraps him up. Yeah, just Aaron White making a name for himself. At, since moving to the Warriors, obviously he was a former Rabbitoh. He was performing all right, but the move to, to the Warriors just made him excel and Two, three, arguably three, is one of the best centers in the competition. Yeah, I think it's it's not arguably if he's one of the best. It's the argument is, is he actually the best? Because there's a lot of good centers running around, but he's definitely in the conversation. Uh, the Sharks have quietly put together a little nice set here. Uh, out of trouble, kickstarted by Honey King, and they've gone down to 32 meters out from the Warriors line. So they're going to have to punt, which brings in this dangerous kick return team. He goes straight to Cooper Cronk. Cooper... Oh, Marcus Square on the right edge, actually. They flip things on me, the Warriors. And he goes straight past MBT, almost the ankle tap. Gets him just. And now Aaron White gets out of half. A little Jemison shuffle, but he's brought down quickly. Uh, 15 minutes in, AMAC. Is this range just getting heavier? Yeah, it's getting heavier. Um, although, just looking over at the Auckland Warriors bench, I'm looking at their new recruit, Ginger Pom, over there. Those other boys, they're, um, they're fully inducting him into the Colt as we speak. I like it. Um, always a funny experience. Can you see any uh, knives, any blood rituals, or are they keeping that in the shed still? Uh, I think that's still in the sheds, but uh, Lawrence, he's got a devious look in his eyes, so it'll be good to see him on the field in about five minutes to get away from the bloke. <laughs> yeah, of course, Lawrence will come on in that 40 to 60 minute prop role. He's been pretty good this season. Now Malchus takes it up. 
Uh, we did gloss over the intercept that the Sharks took. And Warriors just literally throwing away possession now. Now Cassio gets it. Can he push forward from there? He can't. Turned on his back. But once again, it's going to be Sonny Tyre to kick. Drew Matthews not the chaser. He's at half. They go to Sonny Tyre. He dribbles in the grabber. It's picked up by Lucky Tua. Can he push over? Lucky Tua for the line. A meter out. Another great set from the Sharks. Yeah, and they just... Unfortunately, that last tackle option, it, it's not bad, it's just, but it's not the final product that you want, and uh, it's quite unfortunate. And now Barna breaks one, and gets the offload away, and there's a topo, it goes to Corcoran, oh, knock on. I thought we were going to see Kaval streak away there, but the Warriors have just turned it over again in their own half. Ooh, that's, yeah, and that's disappointing, because they just... They had them on the rails, they would have had the ball again, but they just coughed it up and it was... now it gives the Sharks a great opportunity here. Yeah, it seems like they've been doing it the first 17 minutes has been played exclusively in the Warriors' half. And the Sharks are going to look to make him pay here. There's some big fatigue boys getting around in that Warriors side. A few of them are going to want that 20-minute rest. So Sharks have three minutes before they get some recruits. And now Drew Matthews out of half has a double. I did not see that coming. Drew Matthews last season... I was in the running for Rookie of the Year, and this season has just kicked on. Straight over from half there, pushed aside the marker, and he's doubled the lead here for the Cronulla Sharks. What a try. He just... He just... Jameson shuffled out a dummy half, and Lockyer again just getting fended away, and that's twice now Lockyer's been called out on defence. Yeah, it's uh, not the start the young man would have wanted in his first uh, hooking role in the SRL, but... If there's one thing that Warriors are good at, it's bouncing back from a little bit of controversy. They say you can't have a big comeback without a minor deficit, but I think Sonny Ty might have a few things to say about that as this game goes on. So now Cavalli's played for the Warriors for all of 18 minutes. He's already kicked off three times. Quite the inglorious start. Uh, they're going to need to get him some quality ball to hopefully... Turn this scoreline around so we don't see a big blowout. Um, we were speaking before the game, Tyrone. Do you think this picnic jersey's cursed? Uh, it's certainly certainly not their best jersey, but they did they did wear it last week and they did beat the Roosters. Well, so you couldn't call it a cursed jersey, I don't think. As now Malka straight through a hole again. And he tries to turn bunts inside out. You don't see that too often from the lock forward. But the Sharks, once again, just marching downfield. It makes the way out to Cassia. He's met by McCartney. He's going to play at 54, 55 metres from his own touchline. And now Malchus gets it. He turns it inside of Tua, who runs into the shoulder of Daniel Engo. It's a dangerous place, Daniel Engo's shoulder. But Hone King gets the offload away after he breaks the field. The Sharks just keep rolling forward. doesn't matter what happens. They seize the momentum. They're going to have a chance for a kick here again. What does Money Tyre have for us? You think it's got to be the bomb. And he does. He's going to land it right under the post. Drew Matthews is under it again. But instead, Cooper Gronk's there. And he's going to be forced back for a line dropout. A great set after points from the Cronulla Sharks. Yeah, and what a game Luke Malkus is having yet again. Just standing up for his team. And yet again, there, just dragging back into the in goal. Yeah, tremendous. And it's just... This entire game has been like we're watching the Sharks attack. And... They've been quite good at it so far. Now they go left out to Cascade. He goes out to Hone King, but Aaron Wright brings him down. That's not the place to attack if you're a Sharks fan. But they give away the holding tackle penalty. Forget what I'm saying. Uh, the Warriors are on tilt at the moment. They are, and they just need to... They just need to stand the flowers. He's almost kicked that in goal. A perfect kick. That was an inch perfect kick. I was getting a bit worried there. And yeah, Cassia takes the first touch. We saw how dangerous those tap-offs can be. Last week, Tyrone Yagan, when Dry Collins just steamed through a big hole, but our Warriors marked up there. MBT now caught with it. They go out to Malchus. He goes out to Sunny Ty, all the way out to Hone King, and he's over. A big lead opening up for the Cronulla Sharks here. SRL's Wolverine gets his claws into that scoreline. And the Sharks, they're flying. Oh, and this... And the Sharks fans are very happy with this, and... Not normally do you see Aaron White getting run around, but 
The Sharks are just performing perfect football right now. They deserve to be out by this lead, I'd have to say. Yeah, and Drew Matthews will kick this. You think he's a bit of a dead, dead eye with the Buddhas. He swings really wide, actually. Maybe he's heard me. No. Has that wind picked up, eh, Mac? Yeah, the wind's picked up. The rain's picked up. But I've been catching up with uh, an ex-teammate here in Barisic on the bench. And uh, he said they knew the rain was coming. So they've been basically training under a hose all week, which is why they haven't really given away too many errors yet so far, the Sharks. Yeah, innovative, I guess you'd say. Uh, but it's come off and us. The rain does look like it's coming down heavier from up here in the box. So Val kicks off now for the fourth time in 22 minutes. It's just, he's getting a lot of practice at that, which is good, you'll have to say, as he goes down to Delaney and he goes to Chris, who takes a big hit up. I'm not going to pretend to pronounce that last time. Now Farah <laughs> takes it. Uh, is he a former teammate as well, Farah? Hey, Mac? Yeah, Farah's a former teammate. We played with both of them. Actually, Farah was. Uh, one of the blokes who got drafted with me at the end of season yeah, three. Yeah, I thought so. so. Yeah, I knew. So what, what can you tell us about him? Oh, don't talk to him about um, uh, what Luke Short used to do if we lost a game back at the Eels. <laughs> a, um, let's just say it was not a pretty sight in the dressing room unpleasant. afterwards. Yeah, unpleasant mm. we'll go with. As the Sharks have put together another impressive set after points, they really consistent is when they score points, they make sure they complete it put the Warriors in bad field position. They go down again to Marcus Square. His second touch of the game, and his straight pass one almost turns NBT inside out. I think Marcus Square actually replaced NBT at the Warriors, so a bit of a personal showdown there. Uh, but so far, NBT is on top. As they go to Mr. SRL, Logan Strange, he's just been working away in that right second row. A lot of tackles for him so far, not a lot of ball. Joe Turner Jr. now takes a hit up. These bench props are going to have to do something for the Warriors because... They were getting manhandled the first 20 minutes, so it's going to be up to Joe Turner Jr. But David Tiawa, I think that's his first touch of the ball. Oh, his first touch of the ball. He goes to Drew Matthews, who's away, and he he goes straight past Bunce with the ankle tap. Caught eventually. There's too much going on here at the moment. First the line break, then the offload. And once again, the Sharks are on the attack. Yeah, they are. And this is just this is just getting in that deep tear. Oh, what no. Was that? <laughs> what happened there? Just yeah, that's, that I think that's a yeah penalty for an intentional forward pass with what happened just there. Has the wind picked up from behind, Amac? Has, some, has something gone wrong there? Yeah, I think if you saw one of the uh, Sharks forwards was blown way off course and uh, I guess the ball was blown way off course with them. So not not good signs. The wind sock is almost off. Yeah, as Tiawa takes another hit up there. That's his second hit up in all of 30 seconds for two line breaks. So it's starting to look pretty dangerous out there. Maybe he's the man that can spark something. As Joe Tony Jr. gets Drew him backwards, Drew Matthews cleans up under him underneath. Hard to stop him 25 metres out from the line. Now Lockyer goes out to Gavao. He goes out to Makani. All the way out to Chance Bunce. He's popped up on the wing for some reason. Just trying to exploit some space down the edge. Aaron White at dummy half goes left. Uh, McCartney short ball out to Ginger Palm. That's his first touch as a warrior. Uh, he looks better already in the Colt. And they're going to have a chance here for a good kick. They go to McCartney. He dribbles in a little grubber. Picked up by Corcoran and he's over. Very well done from the Warriors. Their first attacking opportunity and they come away with points. Yeah, they needed that. Just being put under the pump in the first 20, 25 minutes. And that's just a bit of a relief there. And they'll be hoping to back it up with another try. Yeah. Rohan Caval taking the kicking duties away from John McCartney since he's moved to the club, and you've got to think he's going to slot this one over. And I think 18-6 is a pretty rare, fair reflection of how the game's gone so far, and the Warriors fans shouldn't be too disheartened because with a bit of a possession swing, uh, they could be right in this game. And it's going to come down to Drew Matthews to get us back underway, and... The Warriors will be looking to do exactly what the Sharks have done after points, just work their way downfield, uh, get to an attacking kick, and hopefully something can happen from it. As here we go, Matthews downfield. He's going to find, I think it'll be Ginger Pom. Joe Tony Jr., sorry, I had my sides wrong. And he takes a nice first hit up there. 
They go back to lock and lock in. Now to Caval down the short side. Chance Barnes. I thought he was going to break a tackle there, but a great tackle from Thomas Usher and cover. Now saddle cart out to lock here. Uh, Joe Turner Jr., he's brought down by Drew Matthews, who's putting together an absolute cracker of a game so far. But still the Warriors are making some pretty good meters. They go to McCartney. He goes inside to Barnes, who gets absolutely flat. Not something you see every day. Chance Barnes just sat backwards. As Corcoran now ball plays. Tiawa, again, he's very, very dangerous. MBT gets them eventually. Uh, but that little short ball play working wonders for them at the moment. It's going to give him a chance for an attacking kick. Uh, after Tiara eventually plays the ball. They go to Caval. He puts up the bomb. It's going to be Usher that comes down with it. And he's away for a second, but eventually Caval brings him down again. Yeah, and Warriors looking threatening. Sharks just do well to defuse the situation and hopefully they can build off it and get some good field position. Yeah, that's exactly what they need. They need to get Tiao a more ball, I believe. Every short ball he's got, he's just punched through a hole. It's been super dangerous. He's now Kasika. Uh, he looked to show that he can be just as good as Tiao, but John McCartney said not today and pushed him backwards. Are they going to have a chance at the 40 20? We see him moving into position. No, Ty gets and goes to Malchus. Uh, Lockyer is up top and Joe Turner Jr. around the backside, but they're going to have a chance now to. Have a good kick return again, the Warriors, and it's even better. It's a charge down from Mr. SRL, Logan That's Strange. And once again, the Warriors in good field position. They could draw within six here going into half time if they put together a good set. And that's not how you want to start it. Ginger Pom driven backwards heavily. But still, Tiawa now, oh, I thought he was through a hole again, but brought down a good tackle from Delaney. Lock here to half. He goes right. Out to Caval. He goes right to the line before he passes. Didn't give Corcoran a whole lot of time there. And as a result, he's driven backwards. The Warriors need to get a move on here if they want to have a good set. Tiawa again, he's the go-to man. He gets him within 15 metres of the line, just keeps pushing forward. And so they're going to have a chance here for a bomb. Where do they go? They go to Caval and he puts it up. It's going to land nine metres out. Very dangerous. Our uh, chance bounce takes it, but he's going to be wrapped up. A good set from the Warriors, but no points. Yeah, and... Warriors, I'd say they would be, they'd be disappointed with how they started, but they'd also be happy that they've fought back and hopefully they don't concede before half time here. Yeah, 12 points is definitely not insurmountable in, seven, in 50 minutes, sorry. Especially with the strike that the Warriors have, but Sharks have looked super clinical so far, and if they get one more, you've got to think they're going to run away with it. As we, Wakabaya Sharky uh, has a nice hit up there and a little offload out to. Jake Hitchens, but he's driven backwards there eventually. It's going to be Ty out to Drew Matthews, and he palms off Lockwood Lockyer. So Drew Matthews is really putting his mark in this game, but nonetheless, they're going to be in for a punt return. A punt kick, sorry. Hone King gets it. What's he doing with the boot? Who knows? He's going to be out of position on the kick chase, so Marcus Square has a chance here to do something, but Hone King, a terrific kick chase from the man himself, and he keeps Marcus Square pinned in the corner. Yeah, and very great, very good there from the Sharks as well, Marcus Square. He has been threatening today. They'll just be happy with how he's gone as Aaron White goes over halfway. Yeah, Aaron White with a nice little line break there. And now Joe Turner Jr. gets it. He's unable to get past Malchus. A good momentum stopper there from Luke. And now Corcoran gets it. And he goes to Tiara, that little short ball and the offload. Back to Joe Turner Jr. He's going to get within five of the line. Three minutes to go to half time. Can the Warriors get one back here? Where's Caval? He's lurking, but they go to the bomb kick. He's Bunt out the back for the tap back. He is. Bunt gets it, and Bunt is over. The Warriors are back. They're going to be going into half time. A try down, and who could have seen this coming? Uh, no one could have seen this coming. Just brilliant fight back for the Warriors. And now they're only in. They're only down by. Eight points, and hopefully kick if he gets come. his conversion, with the kick to come, and he does get it, will be six. How have the crowd taken this aim back? They were really lively ten minutes ago, but it's just swung. Just yeah, like that kick has. The, the, <laughs> the, the Sharks fans, up until about ten minutes ago, you couldn't stop them cheering, and the, the picnic blankets around the place, they were pretty quiet, but swung massively, and now you can almost hear a pin drop in the crowd. They are... Um, they don't understand what's quite happened right here at the Shire. 
Yeah, an 18 point run from the Sharks and now a 10 point run from the Warriors. You can just feel the tension building. We're a bit sad half time's about to come up because uh, you sense a blockbuster's about to unfold. I don't want to wait to see a moment of it as Bunce gets it and he goes to Logan Strange. That was a bit of a funny, funny shape up there, but uh, it worked nonetheless. They're going to have one more chance here, the Warriors, but they're going to have to go the length of the field. And Tiao is a good man to have it if they want that to happen, but he's get wrapped up pretty comfortably there. So now Lockyer gets it, and he goes to Engo, and he's, oh, I thought he was straight through a hole, but a great tackle there from the right second rower to Ua, I believe. Um, Lockyer goes out to Kavar, and he goes right to the line, out to Bunce. Bunce should have ran that. McCartney ends up taking it. Is there a chance of a 40-20 just to give him some field position right before half time? Uh, they look like they want it. It's going to be Corcoran, and... He's not going to have the angle, but it's still a very good kick here. They're going to have a chance. Aaron White's first point of contact, and he does well to bring in MBT. Uh, Ten seconds to go to halftime here. You've got to think the Sharks in is taken conservatively. Uh, that's exactly what they do, but Kalsikow still gets a little line break. Uh, and it's going to be 18-10 heading into halftime. Welcome back to Shark Park, where we have an absolute cracker on our hands. The Sharks out to a fast 18 0 lead by the Warriors, pegged them back slowly but surely, uh, going into half time with a whole lot of momentum. In fact, they probably didn't want half time to come the way they were playing. Anthony McDonald was able to get to both sheds at half time. Hey, Mac, uh, give me the run down. Well, actually, the message was the same from both sides. Both captains roared into their teams to tell them to stop the errors because, well, both sides have been scoring off errors almost predominantly tonight, so. Even though the rain's coming down, Sunny Tyre and Dance Bunts, they want their boys to hold the ball and push forward. Yeah, Sunny Tyre, not noted for his rain play. He much prefers the sun, uh, the warmth, and he's been pretty good with his grubbers. Uh, oh, a little holding tackle there to start the game off. That could be very enterprising. A little sin bin potential later in the game. Definitely not what the Sharks wanted. We talked about uh, cutting out the errors. Giving the Warriors a good chance to get on the board here. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Oh, I no. Run. I can't handle this. <laughs> One, release. Yeah, and just like the other Warriors, let the foot off the gas. MBT takes a nice little hit up. Delaney. Oh, Delaney oh. goes in. <laughs> oh, what am I watching here? Amac, are you sure you heard? the halftime correctly. It's been error after error since the game started, but having said that, the Warriors look to settle, hopefully. David Barner's back on that, back on the field in that prop role again. McCartney out to Lee Simon, fresh on the field, and he's going to score. Lee Simons is over. Oh, oh he oh, almost did score. Lee Simons, I had the heart was in my mouth there for Lee, but he gets over the line. That's the perfect first touch for him. Oh, he can't ask for better. Oh, oh, he almost hit Jim Matthews. Run almost. away from, run away from Jim Matthews, not towards him. At least he scored. Yeah, try nonetheless, and that's really gonna uh, put a dampener on this Cronulla crowd, who are really, really loud. Uh, Amac, anyone leaving yet, or do they have faith in the boys? Um, I saw a couple of people get up and and start moving towards the exit, but. Um... Oh yeah, no, it's 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 hard to say what the crowd is doing at the moment. I've got my um my rain rain beater and my my umbrella, and I'm hoping not too much stuff gets thrown at the back of me at the moment. Yeah, that makes sense. There are unruly bunch out here. It's now Drew Matthews. He's going to kick off. He's done a lot of that recently. I'm not sure what sparked the change for the Warriors, but uh, one definitely happened. Perhaps the substitutions. Perhaps it was just the inevitable momentum swing that comes with SRL games. But nonetheless, they're on the move here. It's now Barna. He's going to bring it down about 25 metres out from the first half. And the Sharks are going to have to be careful here. The last time they kicked off, uh, they gave away a penalty. And it ended up eventually costing them after a bit of ping pong with who was going to make the errors. As Logan Strange uh, plays the ball eventually. Caval goes to Bunce. I thought he was going to go through. But instead of square that goes through, the big unit brought down eventually by, I think that's Fonay King that got him. As now Joe Turner Jr. gets it. And he's popped up in that right second row position. So in yeah, in that position is now Lockyer goes out to Kavar, and we just see Joe Turner Jr. run off the field there. So uh, he's a bit of a mutiny from John McCartney, but eventually the message came through and he's ran off. It's now going to be up to Lachlan Lockyer putting the kick, and it's quite a good one eventually. Goes all the way down to Hone King, and he goes straight past two of them. Bunce wraps him up there as he does. Great tackle. 
And now MBT straight through. It's going to be able to bunce to make back to back tackles. MBT really done well there to pick his time. And he's gone 45 meters with the ball. And giving the Sharks a great opportunity to seize the mo momentum back in this game. Delaney takes a settler just to let everyone catch their breath after the big break. You think they've got to be looking at Kausakai out down this left edge. He's been a monster this season. Sunny Tai gets and everyone overruns him. So once again, uh, a settler for the Sharks. They have two tackles here to make something happen. They go out to Delaney. And he also takes a third settler. So really setting up for the last play here, the Sharks. He's going to come down to Sunny Tai to put a good kick in. And instead, he doesn't want it. So he goes out to Lucky Tua. And that's a really well-placed kick if someone can get under it. But they can't. And Marcus Square takes it for the seventh tackle set. Yeah, just a disappointing option there on last, and they'll be seething at that one. And now the Warriors have another foothold, and they they could potentially take the lead. That's one move. Yeah, and they're going to need to slowly chip away at this Sharks team. That's what worked for him in the first half. As Tiawa, he was dynamite in that first half. Three line breaks in about three minutes before the. Shark switched on and decided it was time to make some tackles. McCartney, he switched sides as well. And he goes to Logan Strange. And I saw a line break from uh, Mr. OG. He's brought down to 39 metres out from the Sharks line. A few positional changes at half time for the Warriors. There's now Corcoran straight through a hole. MBT goes the gap. And Patrick Corcoran has a double. Forget about the positional changes. The Warriors are here to play. Oh, and Corcoran with that dot with the second try of the game. And now the Warriors are in front. Who would have thought from 18 nil down? They've managed to come back and they're leading. Yeah, 18 nil down. Uh, they ran in. It'll be 22 unanswered points. You've got to think by the time Rohan Kavar slots this over. Uh, I'm not sure what's in the Gatorade for the Sharks, but I think they need to switch it out. Yeah, they do. They just, they just need to find something again. They need to find that form that's... The fight. The fight that they had in the first half an hour, which has now been deplenished. Yeah, it's not about how hard you can hit it. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. And that's what the Warriors did. They just absorbed everything the Sharks had and unloaded twice as hard. And the Sharks, they're rocked at the moment. They're on the ropes. And uh, with the experience the Warriors have, you've got to think they're going to keep going on with it. Anyone leaving yet now, Amac? Because uh, it's been a bleak 20 minutes for the Sharks fans. Oh, I wish they were leaving. They've started to stand up and shout <laughs> abuse at the ref and the, and the sideline staff at the moment. So um, I'll keep you posted, but you might want to have your emergency evacuation exit ready and raring to go. I'm on the shark side anyway. All refs are usually dogs, especially the ones on the field today as Tiawa takes it. But they have been pretty good. I will be honest. They have made many mistakes here today as Barney gets and he goes out to Logan Strange. It's been a tough old set for the Warriors. Fourth tackle and they've gone all of 20 metres from the kickoff. A uh, big run needed here, and they go out to the Danger Man saddle cart. Uh, so it's looks like he's not going to come back on a prop because he's still on the field now. So interesting use of Josh. Uh, we're going to have to see him he, he get more balls. Now Lockyer takes it. It's his second kick of the game. It's his second good kick of the game. He almost found grasp, but instead MBT takes it. And he's wrapped up in a great tackle there uh, by Patrick Corcoran. Sharks now have to capitalize, and Matthews just have Drew Matthews really is now having a game. Yeah. Yeah. Delta. We sort of saw the potential in Drew Matthews last season. Just so, oh, that's really good. If they get on him again, will they? Bobby Worman brought down there. I think that's Ango. Maybe Barn. I'll have to have a quick look at the spreadsheet to see who that was. As now Usher takes it down. Yeah, we saw the potential in uh, Drew Matthews last season. He was drafted really high by the Sharks, and they rated him quite highly. Again, Bobby Worman, two tackles. You need to get off the field, son, because someone's got a target on you. Uh, that's I've been in that position that Bobby's in. It's not fun. As Bunce now gets it, and he goes straight past MBT. Bunce is away, and the ankle tap, a great ankle tap, brings him down 45 metres out from the line. Not something you see too often, but really good for the Sharks there, just pressure play uh, to keep themselves in this game. Yeah, that was a try save. That was a cert try if you didn't get that ankle tap, so really impressive from the Sharks. It's, it also shows that they can still fight. They're still in this. They're here for it, yeah. And you just saw that little swerve that Bunce had to put on there. Oh, a little knock on there. That's not going to help. The little swerve Bunce had to put on to get past an MBT. Slowed him down just enough uh, for the cover tackle to come. And now Delaney, I thought he was going to get run. Right oh, now Logan Strange gets into the action. Worman again. What's that man done to this Warriors board pack? That's three tackles. 
and three times he's been sat in his backside. <laughs> That's just unlucky. Three times. Yeah. Just don't give him the ball, Sharks, for everyone's sake. It's not safe anymore. Lucky Tour takes the hit up instead. And Sharks are in good field position here. Sunny Ty now goes out to James Anderson. He's driven back in a great tackle by Tiawa. So uh, the Fords have come to play here for the Warriors. They're doing really well this set defensively. The Usher now takes it and the pressure comes off a little bit. He goes straight past that cart. Still, I'm not sure they're going to be able to get a real accurate bomb in the Sharks here. It comes to Lucky Tour who takes it. Uh oh, who's underneath it? Of course, it's Chance Bunce. And he's going to be brought down eight meters out from his own line. And Sharks just just getting down the other end, but they just can't capitalize on it. Yeah, that was really a chance for them to get back into this game. But like you said, just unable to capitalize. The, the last play just needed to be a little bit better. I had just one one more chaser to put some pressure on. It's now McCartney goes to Logan Strange. And he's driven backwards there. So it seems like defense is winning for both teams at the moment. Tiawa takes it, and he's unable to go anywhere, but he's been a workhorse tonight. Just a whole lot of ball for him. Only 21 meters gained for the set, so it's going to be a big kick here to get him out of trouble. They go to Jai McCartney, and he drives it downfield. A real good kick, uh, but MBT gets to it on the full, and he's straight past the first defender and straight past the second defender. It's going to be a foot race, but Bunce is going to round him up. MBT knows it and turns back inside, and once again, Tyro, and the Sharks are in good field position here. I thought I was forward. Oh, yeah, they're going to play on that one. Yeah, Sharks need to take this opportunity there, I have to say. They haven't had this good of an opportunity for quite a while, and they're going to have good chance here. Yeah, real good chance, and Lucky Tour takes it straight through a hole, a level ball game after that great MBT run. Straight through the middle, Lucky Tour. Tremendous from him. Yeah, just really impressive. Just ran straight through the middle of them, and... He got rid of Bunce there. That was really impressive. Not many people can get rid of Bunce and put it down to score. So, Sharks, that's very impressive. Yeah, really good. They're going to be up now two points, and hopefully the abuse has stopped for you now, AMAC. Yeah, well, the, the abuse is still coming, but it's actually happy abuse now. The um, <laughs> the, the crowd, they, they, they could sense the uh, the uh, positional shifts happening. Uh, the, the field position battle being won by their boys, and as they got closer and closer... The screams, they got louder and louder and just exploded when Tua got over the line just then. Yeah, and they're not the only ones to explode. I saw Joe McCartney's head just about exploded with just a series of events that led to that try. Uh, it was very stoppable for the Warriors if they just had one person put up their hand and make a tackle. But unfortunately, uh, apart from the two props, they're a bit loose at the moment. There's now Anderson gets underway. Was he ever at the Rabbits? Tyrone Anderson, or is that another uh, Anderson? Uh, no, we have James Anderson. Unfortunately, Jack Anderson was on our radar, but we couldn't. We were ah, sorry, him. different, different Anderson. The Jay Anderson is yeah. tricking me, and he chuck in a and Freddie the white head Yeah, and the white. They head all have white head gear. <laughs> are they related? Do you know the two Andersons? I, I don't. I don't know. I can't tell you. Don't think yeah, so. Yeah, perhaps though. we'll have a man in the sky chase that up. It's now lucky to. Ooh, made a really nice break and. Bunt says enough's enough and put him down. And now it's going to be up to Drew Matthews to extend this lead out to four points. Yeah, and taking the two might... Is not a bad option? But probably with the field position, you could have probably gone for another set on the Warriors. You don't, you would have had a good field position as well. Yeah, really sort of put your foot on the throat and twist rather than uh, take the, the easier option, guaranteed points, but... Uh, only two of them, as opposed to rolling the dice and maybe getting six, which really will put this game to bed. Uh, as we're going to see the last prop rotations come on from either side here, so a big chance for both sides to bring on some fresh energy and get into this game. Four points isn't a big difference, and with 20 minutes to go, uh, it's still anyone's game. Yeah, it is. Oh, sorry. No, sorry, I, I can't go. <laughs> Barris is back on field. Uh, he'll be instrumental, and there's Lucky Tour. He's been great since he switched to that lock jersey. Um, he's been doing it quite often this season. You can see why, just immediate impact. And now uh, Kowski gets, uh, I don't think I've caught him this whole half, so he's been very quiet, uh, especially when you look at what David Tiao is putting out in the other edges. Now Barris is getting to the outdoor Hone King. Aaron Wright drives him back. They've had a good battle all game, and it's still continuing. 
Now Hitchens gets it. He goes to Sunny Tyre. Out to Kalsakia. And he's going to be brought down 51 metres out from his own line. And once again, after points, uh, the Sharks is going straight back to the textbook. Up the guts. And now a good kick. And that's exactly what they've done. But they're going to have to mark up well on Gronk. And he goes straight through a couple. Cooper Gronk. Wow. It's MVP Lee Simon. Took me into <laughs> <laughs> Lee Simon, sorry, sorry. Lee Simon, she's had a cracker of a game so far. Stato Cart now had a half. I think that's Lee Simon's second touch and a that's second line second. break. So uh, maybe 80 minute Lee could be a thing again. As three Tiara three. gets it, and <laughs> he, goes, he goes out to L3 and he beats MBT, but he's brought down three line breaks for L3 in three runs. Uh, maybe he could be the game breaker here. Forget Bunce. Lee Simons is the man, but I, I do have to say, I think Bunce is still the man for the Warriors. And now Lockyer goes out to Gronk. There he is. He's back on the field. He's brought down eight metres out from the line. A really good chance for a grubber kick here. You see John McCartney get behind the play the ball. And he drops one in. Who's there? It's Corcoran. He dives on it, and he's a metre out. Unable to get a hat-trick pack, Corcoran. Yeah, that, that was unfortunate. Just He just dived on it, but unfortunately, he was just short of the line. And... Matthew saw that and he just sat on top of him, basically. Yeah, and now Sabbath Tour back on the field as well for the Sharks in that prop roll. Uh, he was good in the first half, in the second roll, just locked down TR and we see what happened uh, as soon as he went off the field, just line break Galores. Now MBT gets it and Lockyer makes a great tackle there. He's had his moments, Lockyer, in defense, but uh, that's a crucial one because MBT very, very dangerous. And they're going to look at the 40 20 here. Ah. Uh, He's put that into the stand. Oh, <laughs> huh. uh, I think he saw someone in the crowd he wanted to give it to. L lovely bloke, Anthony Delaney. He must have seen a little kid trying to give him a ball, yeah, a so game day ball. He, so. Here's a match ball. <laughs> here's a match so that's ball. That's going to be yeah, big mistake from the Sharks. So they've just invited the Warriors into field position. and uh, We know what they can do, and straight away, Bunce gets to work. Straight past. I think that's Drew Matthews by good cover defense. Nonetheless, 90 metres out. Lockyer goes to Engo. Back on the field now, as well as Gronk. Uh, a really dominant front three here for the Warriors between Gronk, Engo, and Barna back on him. That lock jersey. Caval takes it. He's going to end up about three metres from the line. They need a big moment here from a big player. Where do they go? Straight out to Cooper Gronk. He's driven backwards. Where's Tiara with a crash over play? They go. They're going to go out to him. Out to Tiara. And a great tackle. A really good tackle there stops him from scoring. They're going to have to make something happen here, the Warriors. Time's starting to run short. They're in great field position. They go to McCartney. He puts up the bomb. It's a little bit shallow, but they get the backpack. He goes to Bunce. Can he get over from there? He's going to push forward. Bunce, again, they finish a meter out from the line. Yeah, and Sharks do survive, and they're going to try and build out of their own end. Hopefully put, this, put the Warriors out of commission. Yeah, that's what they're going to have to do. Barisic now, a really good hit up. Must have learned something from you, Mac, because I've seen you do that one too many times in your time. Straight through there to get some momentum. And they go now to tie. They're looking look at the inside ball, and it works. MBT into the backfield and breaks a tackle. Breaks a tackle. I think that's of David Barna. He's done well there to eventually bring him down. Now Kowski gets it, and he's running straight at Aaron White. And that's Rohan Kaval on that side as well. By the Sharks, as they're finding some field position here. They go to Barisic again, and he gets a little offload away. He's a noted offload to Barisic, and Drew Matthews is ready for it. They're going to have a chance here just to really turn the screws here. If they can get a repeat set, and that's a really good spot to put the kick. If they can get a repeat set, the Sharks here. Oh, David Barner gets the fend off and stops it. He's saved the Warriors' bacon there. Yeah, and Warriors are going to have a hard time trying to get out of their own end. They're just going to need some of their stars to stand up for them. Yeah, and there's one of them, Daniel Ango, straight through a big hole. Potential 40-20 chance here if they get into position, but it looks like they're just going to play percentage football. McCartney goes out to chance once, and he's straight through one into the backfield again, and gets the offload away. Now it's Saddle Cart with a run, uh, 38 metres out from the line. If they have a good run here, they could be in position for a good kick, and they go to Barnard to do it, but he's wrapped up well there by Matthews and Co. So it's going to be a punt kick here for the Warriors. They're going to have to mark up well on this kick defense to keep this game uh, in the balance. McCartney, he goes down cross field. I thought he was going to go down the corridor, but he goes cross field and ends up with Sonny Ty with the ball. Uh, the money man in an unfamiliar position there for the halfback. Yeah, and just 
Uh, and the Sharks now will be trying to try to end this game once and for all. And yeah, just... if they get one here, it's game over, isn't it? Yeah. I think whoever gets... I reckon whoever scores next, it's probably game over. Yeah, as MBT takes it, it's been a great defensive set here from the Warriors. Just keep the Sharks pinned and I'm... The old mousetrap play. I haven't seen that one for a while. Worming gets it. It ends up swooping onto it like a hawk. Tua was. Goes out to Usher. He's brought down. They save the set, the old Sabbath, with the line break. They now get to spit it out left. They have a chance for a punt kick here. They're going to go down to Chance Bunt. He takes it a meter from his own line. Can he go the distance here? He goes past one, but brought down the great tackle there. Delaney chasing his own kick. Yeah, great there from Delaney. Just putting it basically nearly on his own goal line. Having to make him chase it all the way. And that was really yeah. impressive as Malchus. It's once again another big defensive set. So the big boys are here to play and no one's getting through. Even Tiawa can't find a hole. Can they bang the 40-20 to bring some life into this game? Because it's starting to get to panic stations. They're going to go for a John McCartney goes downfield. That's a terrific he got kick. It. He's got it. <laughs> he's bounced out. McCartney. With a tremendous 40-20, the fans were calling for it, and the fans have got it. And now the Warriors are in position here, and he takes the hit up as well. He wants the little bar driver try, but I think he overestimated his range there. Nonetheless, Cooper Gron gets out to Kaval, out to Aiden Lawrence, out to Aaron White, and they lose meters in that play, but it's going to give him a bit of space now to ball play, and Lockie is going to have to spin it left, and that's where he goes. Out to David Barner. He gets a little short pass out to Engo. And he's going to push forward to be literally in the middle of the field. So they have options each way. He gets out of half right, passes left. Tiawa gets it. Can Tiawa push over? He can't. A meter out from the line. This is it here for the Warriors. This is their chance to win the game. And where do they go? McCartney. And McCartney's going to push over. Oh, I'm not sure. Did he get turned on his back late there, McCartney? I think he got it down. And... Oh, he, uh, he, he got has. It down. McCartney. That is a match winner from Dry McCartney. He stepped up when his team needed him. And pending a conversion kick here, the Warriors have snatched the lead late. Yeah, just heartbreak for the, for the Sharks. They just had them on the ropes all game. And just the concede with five minutes to go and it'd just be disappointing. Yeah, I'm almost hesitant to ask Anthony. What's it like down there on the sideline now? Uh, be collective groan that just went up from the crowd just then it's now complete silence so i don't know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing but i hope security is ready to escort the warriors into the team bus at the end of this game for their own safety yeah you could hear a pin drop or more accurately more accurately you could hear a drama can you put down you just the the air was sucked out of the stadium there and now five minutes to go warriors in pole position uh pending no stupidity on there and you think they're gonna be able to just manage this game home the sharks will have two sets at best with the ball more than likely just the one and caval goes to gronk and that's great from the warriors just a little bit of ball playing you saw the sharks rush up on caval there to try and limit his time and now a little penalty so frustration getting to the sharks there i uh, know last season uh sunny tie kicked a field goal in this respective game to ice the game out and he's gonna have to step up here again uh to continue his streak over the warriors because at the moment, with four minutes to go, the Warriors are in the box seat. Yeah, they are. They just, they can dictate the game how they want to now. And that's what you'd think they'd be doing. And if they do so, I think it'll be very hard for the Sharks to come back. Yeah, the Sharks going to get one chance to the ball. You'd think as Barna takes a hit up and they're going to have to go the length of the field, pending some sort of freaky grubber pick up and run the field. I just can't see the Sharks getting back into this game. And it's a great disappointment for them because this was their chance to keep touch with the top four. And instead, it's the Warriors. And I think they're going to go over here. Yeah, Warriors have put icing on the cake. Josh Saddle-Cart, in his return to the centers, has uh, got on there. And that left edge has been really dangerous since halftime, actually. Between Saddle-Cart and Lee Simon, uh, they've caused the Sharks no end of problems. Yeah, and just, just great resilience from the Warriors. Just... And then now they get out to the six-point lead. Caval has a kick to definitely put oh, the game I out of reach. I love a 9-18 to 18 game here. Boris can get downfield and do it again. Oh, oh, I'd really I would appreciate that. <laughs> no. Caval kicks it and he swings it it's in. Missed. 
across the post. So we need to try and a conversion, please. Here, Warriors, and Bunts is the man. Three minutes to go. Hopefully can make something happen. I think that's twice in a row now that the Warriors have gone past 30 points. So they got some attacking credentials this season. Uh, it's just the defense that they're going to have to keep up. 26 points is not a, a great number to concede, but I guess we did see last week they only conceded 12 to the Roosters who, um, yeah, they've been under no end of troubles. I'm just going to go out on a limb and hope that we beat them earlier in the week, of course. We don't know the results when this game's recorded uh, before I say too much about their season. And so Kronk takes the hit up. They're going to have... The Sharks won't get the ball. We talked about them having potentially two sets a couple of minutes ago and instead they give away the penalty and then the try to give the Warriors the ball again. Um, almost a disaster class in how to finish the game from Sunny Tire, unfortunately. Yeah, and as you said, the two sets, instead of the two sets, it's actually most likely going to be two plays. Or maybe even... Oh, oh no! There goes my 9-18. I thought that was going to find its way out of saddle cart for a try. and Maybe the Warriors... Uh, have thrown this one away. The Sharks, they have 20 seconds, 10 seconds uh, to get something done here. They need a big line break and something freakish to happen off the back of it. Nope. And it's not to be. Saddle cart brings him down. The siren's going to go here in the background. The Warriors cheer. The Sharks despair as the Warriors in really a huge comeback game uh, end up winning 32 points to 26 here. I think the lead changed three or four times in that game. Just tremendous from both teams. A great spectacle. Yeah, and Sharks were very, very unlucky, you could say. And they did complete more sets. They were more efficient. But it was just whenever they made a mistake, the Warriors did pounce Pounced on it. On it. Yep. Yeah. And they did make more line breaks. So really, it was a pretty even game. But Warriors just capitalizing on the, the mistakes. Yeah, Drew Matthews, two first half tries. Very unlucky uh, to go down. He scored two first half tries. And Corcoran had the double for the Waz. If you look at some individual statistics. And yeah, MBT had a big game, 247 meters. But he was just unable to really find that uh, game-breaking moment there. Drew Matthews, as we touched on already, two tries. And a nice 22 tackles as well, as well as Malchus had 20 tackles. Um, Kalsikau, 164 meters. Malquis in 75 minutes had 165 meters, which, which was also good, but uh, not much else there I see. What do you see there, Ty? Yeah, there's, there is a, not much else to see, but not many errors made, actually, looking at the stats and just having a quick gaze and nah, nothing else, really. So we'll flick over to the Warriors. And yeah, Tiawa, he was enormous. 203 meters. And yeah, those he had his three line breaks, I think, in about three minutes. So for the other 77 minutes, no line breaks, which is kind of interesting. Uh, 19 tackles as well to go with it, which is handy. Uh, Lachlan Lockyer made 17 tackles, but missed four, as we touched on throughout the game. Bunce was big, as always, 190 meters. Uh, less line breaks than MBT, but he did grab the try, and that was influential in the end. And yeah, John McCartney as well, the one try... 111 kicking meters and three try assists. Uh, he's had a game here, especially when there was a bit of uh, chat during the week about his subs and, I mean, his trades and whether or not they were the right call. I think uh, he's come up trumps here. And, of course, Patrick Cork and Huge is always in the middle with 25 tackles. Yeah, and a shout-out I'd like to give to Lee Simon. Three runs for three line three breaks in that try. So really, whenever he got the ball, he was very... Yeah, very three runs for dangerous. 85 meters. In terms of run meters... A run, I think that could almost be a record in the SRR. I've never seen someone, yeah, like you said, three line breaks and one tackle and none miss. So uh, he definitely picked his moments well here today, Lee. And I, I'd also like to point out uh, Aaron White had 10 tackles and only two missed, and Hone King had a lot of ball there, but uh, unable to get through Aaron White. And yeah, that was very decisive in the end. Um, anything more from you, Ty? Are we ready to wrap this up? Yeah, I don't think I don't have anything else. All right, no worries. Thanks for watching, SRL fans. Uh, I believe we have Origin tomorrow. I hope you stick around. I'm going to be actually entering the field on that one. I've been a late call up to the squad, which is always fun. Oh. <laughs> anyway, that's all for me.